topic is uh, agile leadership but if you take a hard look at what we wanted to cover and um, as i speak i'm just bringing up my screen uh, we we definitely didn't want to cover only the aspects of what a leader should do but i think there are so many additional aspects of you know what what leadership is all about uh, so you know mr ghosh chose to cover uh, the people process uh, the data angle of it and definitely as you know almost the entire world is in this journey of digital transformation so how does agile leadership really fit into all of this and and uh, make sense amongst what all we are trying to do so um, i'll i'll hand, hand over the stage to mr ghosh so uh, mr ghosh uh, welcome once again and welcome all the uh participants for today uh thank you for for your time today and uh andrew over if you could introduce you know unicorn consultants and uh, yourself a little bit as in a self introduction to start with and uh, and stage is yours okay. thank you thank you asha charan thank you mr ravi and thank you all the participants who have come today for this uh, discussion on agile leadership now this uh, my name is deepan kumar ghosh dk dk ghosh from india at the present moment and uh, we have been unicorn has been quite a bit uh, doing learning and development in india and also in uae and uh, you can say now in the world cup soccer is going to be played in that country so we have been doing training and consulting in the sense of from lean management to behavioral skills to organizational behavior to sales and marketing across the domains we have done except for the technical part of it well when we are all talking about lean management and all we do a bit of tech technical also as per the client requirement so in training and development we have done across india and also to buy corporates public sectors private sectors Uh, we have been do doing it a little bit in Bangladesh, Nepal, also, so and so forth. And uh, over, we have trained and consulted over four thousand people, and still running sh strong by God's grace. And uh, we have also consulted and trained over eighty organizations. We are also into uh, we have a handshake as in the public-private partnership, Government of India, Ministry of Education, for rolling down a program called. Uh, attribute development for graduating engineers in order to make them or build them in getting jobs keeping jobs so and so forth it is a skill development program under the government of but it pertains not to skill skill but to more to the behavioral skills factors so, so and so forth so we are into all this stuff trying to so, so mr ghosh uh, quick quick check uh, can everyone hear us clear i i see uh, some comments uh, in, in a group saying the sound is not so good uh, so just want to sound is not good check now i can sound. hear you clear so i i just wanted to check if okay so hello check can you hear me all of you please is it any better now if if you check. don't hear if you don't hear me it's good uh, if you can hear mr ghosh that's what yes, we want yes somebody has said yes no yes okay i think it's better yeah let's figure one has said great yeah. new yeah. team is said fine great great all good go ahead all thanks right. can manage well okay eco is there maybe the eco is coming maybe there could be a mo mobile phone beside somewhere in the laptop there but i don't think mine is in eco are you getting any eco mr ravi slightly maybe but that's i think we'll stay with that uh, okay for and see how it comes yeah because i can hear you clear okay great thank you so uh agile leadership i'm starting uh, i mean we've all been there agile leadership well agile the world is like as old as civilization because you would we wouldn't have discovered fire if we were not agile i mean agile as per the oxford or the cambridge or any dictionary would say that how quick you have to adopt how quick you have to manage how swiftly do you act but one thing which comes out in this leadership is everything is about acting okay fine we have 
we have our thought process and some people the philosophers would say that the thought process itself is an action very true but when we try, when we try to get a result it's all about action so what we are looking at is that because of the domination of artificial intelligence now and for the past 10 years let's say very much automation we are looking more of the agile world now coming in the foray but but the but the situation is that agile leadership did not come from any management gurus think tank it came from project management software project developers and that also apart from the army as all the hr strategies came more or less from the world war 2 so agile has also come from project development people the software guys who wanted to bring out softwares which were agile quick to the customers requirement and necessity and and hence developing the process of the customers so that they could themselves be agile and be productive for their customers so hence we have people we need to be agile we don't need to be agile we are not going in there because it is everyone is agile today even to come to this program one needed to wake up and say okay man i got this thing to listen to so that's being agile all right we need to do this that's being agile we need to fight this war that's being agile we need to sit back and relax and sleep for the next 8 hours that's being agile so whatever we do we are doing we are doing if you are transforming into action and and the results which we seek if we are getting somewhere near that i would say that's agile a leadership we know i mean if we look at stats leadership is the maximum number of leadership has the maximum number of papers written about in the management section the word leadership is so so much popular sometimes very controversial and some and most of the most of the times in need of leadership so we have data and digital transformation data of course is data data does not mean that what we are looking at from the customer's angle but data is what we are going to do next is what is agile is all about what do, what is required next why it is required next where should it put us and by when we should finish it it's all about data and digital transformation is digital transformation we are there that's 24 by 7 for us now so what is coming first we cannot put it in that thumb rule that people has to come first but yes people do come first here also right not spread of time because if we talk about very simple thing the communication people are not communicating with the robot okay people are communicating with data okay people are communicating with siri i mean people are asking siri can you tell me more about my boyfriend and what do you think about my boyfriend so we are everywhere in relation to the digital transformation and data so in relation to that when we talk about all these things we again ask ourselves that the human factor the agile leadership factor the agile factor the human factor in relation to management where it is leading us is the it people all controlling us is it that the robots which are going to control us and we are going to only take pictures of, of them so let us if we can look at the next uh, slide or the video just for a couple of minutes or a couple of seconds then i mean you may have seen this and i have borrowed this and i just wanted to show you this because you have seen this i mean you have seen roberts you have seen honda roberts in 1990s right honda motor company so now the question here is where does it where does it throw us where does it throw the uh, human beings who are just looking for a good job who just want to come back to their family at the end of the day i mean we ask these questions where the world is going is it going to be 50 50 i mean the, the the better half and the not so better half so when we are looking at the word called agile yes it's going to stay for us in relation to technology in relation to leadership in relation to strategies can we have the video please sure uh, thank you mr ravi thank you It's a quick check if the if if the audio yeah. is yeah we heard it it's loud okay
technology to protect us and keep our lives safe, simple, and easy. <laughs> yes, I think we got the message that where the world is going. And where the world has gone. So, I mean, if I see this guy walking down the street for a cup of chai or a cup of coffee, I'm going to be scared. Now, the question here is the strategy which was taken by whoever built this, or who are doing the business here, is where are the human bodyguards? I don't see any. You don't need any if you have this person around because he's got a 360 degree camera and he's got cadence with it which we cannot see. So, <laughs> great agile leadership is coming big time. Here the people saw the vision. Here the people had the vision. All right, we're going to have that market of a premium market where we're going to sell those kind of products and service to those kind of people who are premium. So here we have a very high degree of agile leadership in action. Nothing good, bad or ugly about it. It is just that this is a system. This is the environment, and this is where we are leading to. And we wish that if this kind of development is happening in relation to environmental control, if this kind of uh, happening in relation to housing or medical, that's great. I think it's happening in medical also. So agile is something is a word which we are there. We have been there from time civilization. We are still there. We are progressing with it. And agile is all about your thought process, where you are, why are you there, where you want to be. And that's why they that's why they are there. They got this Titan guy here saying salam alaikum. Incredible. Incredible. All right. So if we can move into the next slide. Yeah. So where is this coming from? This this leadership of ours is coming from our listening. I mean, whether we are working on a CNC machine on the shop floor, the maintenance guy who's been working there for the past 20 years, he knows the sound of the machine for, he knows that if something goes wrong there, the manual machine, I'm not talking about a artificial intelligence driven CNC machine. He knows from the sound of the boiler that today something is wrong with my mother, right? So if something is wrong, some way something is not tweaking rightly. So that's listening to the environment. This guy's listened to the environment. They brought out this robot. So it's all about where we are, what we are listening to in the environment in the community, what we need to do, what should benefit us as human beings. That's, that's the first thing is listening is leadership. I mean. I mean, in leadership, that's the first thing is listening. Because if you are listening, what is the requirement? What is the need? If you are listening, not hearing, okay, then we are being a child. And if we are making a decision towards something better, I mean, for, for everyone, it's a perception of betterment. But if we're talking about general, then something better, I mean, for a guy who is going nine to five, his this robot is no 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 big deal for him. It does not exist in his mind. Right? If he's just a regular guy, all right. But someone who is making the next generation of robots, who is making the next generation of programs, automation, that's a big deal for him. I mean, the hand movement is a very big deal for him to pick up a box of cartoon on the shop floor and deliver it without any human being help. So this is what we are talking about listening. What are we listening in the environment? What is the requirement? What is the need? What is the requirement of my process? Where are we going wrong? Why are we going wrong? How we can make it better? So that's where the leadership starts. And leadership starts with your listening. Okay. 
So if there is any question, shall I continue with this? Or shall we have a, a little bit of a one-on-one -on -one questions a little bit? If we have any questions. So we could, we could. And, and I think Sorry? I'll definitely uh, uh, encourage everyone to unmute and maybe even even uh, use the chat box if that's more uh, um, you know convenient but but i think while you were you were speaking and then like i said before i bring up the next slide i was thinking of just bringing up one point saying while you are establishing the you know what leadership is about and all um, one thing that i wanted to and and, and you may be covering that i am always very intrigued by how we learn from various other domains, right? So we are we are a business community. And many of us here could be HR professionals. Some of them could be business professionals as well, right? From different domains. So one thing that I've always tried to learn is how do we learn from the best practices of other domains, other functional areas, and uh, some may be completely different domains. So let's say the defense forces on or the armed forces across the world. Right. So, in fact, you know, I was just picking up saying, you know, how agility uh, really is practiced in armed forces. Does it even apply to some of these very conservative structured uh, frameworks? Right. So I think if if in your, uh, you know, next few slides or even at the end, if you can just bring in some of these perspective, because I think it's important for us to appreciate, you know, while we talk about agility and, and I'm talking you talking about a real life thing. My wife is driving the agile uh, uh, function for HR for a large bank here in Singapore. And she says all the boardroom discussions are about agility. And when they step out of the boardroom, uh, the leaders go to their teams and say, you talk about agility or you spell agility with A, you lose your job. Right, because they don't want that agile um, agenda to affect their performance, their deliverables. Because so, so there's a there's a there's a huge conflict in this overall thing, right? So, what's two, easy, what's comfort zone? There are two or three so, points in your conversation at yeah. this point of time. Agility is equal to armed forces. As I mentioned slightly before, that all is agility equal to armed forces. If I can. agility is equal to armed forces because. I mean, you got to have the eyes behind your back. You got to know, I mean, this we knew that they, it was going to be attacked, the country, particular country. So they had the information, maybe they didn't move or they're not moving. Okay, so agility is equal to our forces because all these strategic decisions, all the development, whether it was chemical warfare or so on and so forth, really started in World War One and World War Two, And HR also borrowed a lot of things from there. I mean, today the psychology started in, during the World War Two period. When, which we talk about behavioral science, all right? So the question here is that agility is equal to armed forces. And now when you talk about the boardroom, realistic affairs, sometimes not most, not in all organizations, I would say that, because if you had all those things, which you just now mentioned, if I take it as a negativity of thinking, negativity, sometimes people say there's no positive negative with the flow, but whatever be it, if you're taking the negativity of it, then what we are looking at is that these people don't have a vision and mission. I mean, they're just going to be there just for the sake of it because they know their processes are there. The processes will take care of it some or the other next day for the next two years. And then hey, what the hell, man? We'll see what happens after next two years, two years. But not in the case of when we saw this video, the robot, this guy who's going to make these strides. They saw the future. They saw whatever be it. It may have displaced quite a few people. It may have taken away the jobs of quite a few people. It may have given jobs to quite a few people more. Okay, there has to be a control room. There has to be some... Uh, Big time programmers who are at the end of the day controlling the robot also are taking information, taking data of the next movement of the next uh, phase of action for the robots. How he behaved with this kind of person? How his camera took an action when he saw when he saw the uh, I think it is a he or a she uh, when he, when it saw the uh, person coming close to him. Uh, so was it an aggressive behavior? Was it an assertive behavior? What kind of a behavior was that? So all this are data which is coming in. So this is happening. This is agile in motion. This is agile in action. This is agile in the industry. So if somebody in the boardroom people say that they are there, they are there in the stone age, they're there, they're driving the wheel with squares, not wheels. They're driving not with circular wheels, they're still driving with squares. But the question about change, when we talk about agile, when we talk about developments about change, so change always pushes industries 
out of the ring or sometimes gives a very good kick and a true leader comes a true leader a leader comes in who shows the path okay fine we have been just sitting and having chips and coffee and discussing soccer whatever it is i think it's time to move or we will lose our jobs or we will lose the company so agile will not wait for any but neither does change wait for any which comes first chicken or the egg egg or, egg or the chicken i think agile comes first because it's your thought process it's your mind in action why am i here what am i supposed to do what is my next action whether i'm writing a book whether i'm selling popcorn on the street can i make it better can i make it better can i make it that's how the world is i mean today we could have spent money on maybe on more better housing for the lesser uh, economic developed people rather than think of going to the moon or the mars well people are thinking that if i take one particular community to the moon and the mars they will be well off that's what's an agile decision so that's just what we are doing in this world right now is that if you are not agile i mean if you are not thinking if you are not moving with our thoughts we could be left behind our companies could sink so that is a constant that is no change sure thanks i'll i'll bring back the slides, slides but i think um, yeah more than happy to take any questions and comments i think uh, even in the chat uh, okay yes <laughs> this is a very big thing which uh, a very famous person talked about also but this was in our south east in south east asian spirituality or abundance mentality abundance mentality is let us be happy where we are see if you are if we are spiritual we are leaders we we want to not to pray every day but we are praying every moment okay so the question here is the abundance we could pray every moment and we don't need to pray every day. abundance mentality is there is enough for me to create something new to innovate something new to bring in something new in my life or in my process where i work so that's about it i don't need to yes maybe jealousy could be of could be the spark of motivation why is that guy doing so well and why am i not doing that well that could be as well why is he being able to take those kind of this i am not that could be but that should not bring me down he's better than me no abundance means we have enough resources that's the beginning again of leadership that's the beginning of again of thinking ahead is beginning of motivation for me that i have it i'm going down i'm depressed every day yes i am i'm depressed it's not going where i should be so what do i need to do what my company needs to do what my process needs to do what my product needs to do what my customer needs to do why do i influence it? so that's evident mentality is basically i should be happy where i am in the sense i i should not go too far with my jealousy I should, i'm talking street language a little i should not go too far of thinking that that guy is better than me that company is better than me that is but i cannot reach it they have got more resource they got more money but no i have it also whatever resource i have it so because we are in one sense constrained with resources and in the other sense we have enough of resources i'm not talking about national i'm talking about technology also so abundance mentality is let us play where we are in in the south east really uh, i think spirituality we do have the thing that the multiverse was there in south east asia we are talking about multiverse right spider man is talking about multiverse doctor uh, whatever doctor strange is talking about multiverse but it was there with us we didn't do anything about it we didn't think about it this guy is thinking about it that's great so the evidence mentality is if it is there within us why are we not talking about taking a step forward it bring it in the leadership okay why are we not taking the decision why are we not putting whatever resource we have and build something build a new uh, space rocket which will take us to neptune so or will make our housing better for our poor people so abundance mentality so ab and not be uh, totally governed by what do you call schemes government schemes abundance mentality is what we require are we invest in the social world of us we are that is why so many pictures has come in I mean, I was reading somewhere in the HBR or somewhere like that, couple or two or three years just before the pandemic. And I did not finish reading the full article, but the question from the psychologist is that why are women or why are people going into pornography so much? What is what is attracting them to go into this pornographic business? Is it a social factor? Is it likely to be? Is it that we are? we have to be recognized by people so all this drives us 
All right, no, not, there's nothing good, bad, or ugly. I'm trying to define it. I'm trying to define what, what could be driving. And there's nothing harm in feeling that I'm good. It says nothing harm in feeling that I need to be recognized also, because that's part of Ajahn leadership. But that's that's just if we are just there, then we are putting on our makeup, makeover. We are just putting on a lipstick. We are not doing anything more than that. When we are thinking to do something, then that's what we are talking about. Action. People are inspired by those who lead by example and actively engage in their own development. This is true, rather action rather than words, as Gandhi said. Okay, fine, I brought the old man here. But the thing here is that we have to put ourselves into the action more. And we have to, if we are trying to be agile leadership, we don't need to do anything. But if we are trying to be, then we have to put ourselves into action. We need to we need to see what is the next, what is the next, what is the next. Open for questions. I think we'll take a couple of slides more and then uh, take it. That's okay. So here's on. See, people. Uh, this uh, I was reading the interview of. Sony chairman a couple of two or three years back. And uh, he was asked that how far Kaizen is valid in the Japanese manufacturing philosophy or the Japanese industrial philosophy. He said very much. Even with the robotics, which has come in 1980s in Japanese manufacturing, yes, it's very much. It's our philosophy. It's our spirituality. Okay, that's continuous improvement for us. So we believe in that. Even if we have to take out the microchip, and throw it away into the uh, sea of Japan. We will do that. But our thinking process is about continuous improvement. Okay. And bring in another uh, microchip, a billion dollar costing in R&D, which will give benefits of about $100 billion more. That's okay. But we still believe in Dyson. We still believe in small changes. Now, when we are talking about changes, so where, when we are talking about agile leadership, we talk about thought processes, we talk about actions, we see where we are, where we should be. And why we are not getting there, and why, how we should get there, and why we should get there, we talk about change. And some critics are there when we look at this Charlie Chaplin picture. That uh, so there are certain critics who could be there that this particular awesome person was uh, negative to change in modern times. So it could be, it is not, or it could be that all change is not good. And sometimes we have to take a decision backwards and think that the decision which I'm taking as an entrepreneur, as a social media influencer, as a MD of a very big organization, or as a doctor in the operation, a new method of operating, how effective will it be on the human beings, on the person, on the process? Is a change good? That's also a giant issue. I wonder how many leaders really think when they go in for change and this, 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 how many leaders really think and consider, is this change good? So maybe he was trying to portray that in the movie that all changes may not be good. Maybe sometimes when we go in for change, we need to take a step backward, two steps forward, one step backward, for being change for you. So in the, in the sense that whether, whether the change decision which we are taking, how effective will it be after five years down the line? How effective will it be? 20% gaining, 30% gaining, 2% gaining, or what is it? Even in, even in the consideration of the monetary, what is it the effect it will have in myself, in the process, in the teams, in the customers, in the community, in everywhere? So change, maybe this person was trying to say that let us take some time to step back when we take a decision. That's also agile leadership. Because when you consider to consider change, that means also you're trying to consider whether I'm taking a decision is correct or not. So again, you're considering change on change. You're asking yourself whether I'm correct or not. So you're again asking a change on a change. And if when you see that, no, we could modify that, we could rectify that, we could scrap the plan, that's change also. Because your thought process has been there. So the Japanese and the Chinese believed, I'm sorry, the Japs believed, and the American very old management philosophy uh, and management equation, very old, change equal to the satisfaction. That's your agility and process. When you're running teams, when you're running processes in the teams, when you, you see that whether your people would like to bring down two steps to 1.5 steps. What's the vision? Vision is 1.5 steps to 0 0.5 steps. How are you going to take, how are you going to get there? First step, action. Is it greater than inertia? I is for inertia. It's not physics inertia. It's where I am. 
Have I crossed that place? Where am I? Have I crossed that? Where I should be? Have I reached that place? Even, even if I take a decision at the end of the time, no. Where I am is okay. My resources are fine. Uh, my resources are good enough for this. My customers are happy at this point of time. If I move faster, we will not gain much. We may lose a little bit more. So let us not just go in for the sake of the stakeholders or the shareholders for that matter. Let us stop where we are. Let us continue at this point of time and we'll take a decision later on whether to move ahead or that's a decision taken for change because you have decided not to change or change. So this is what we are talking about agile leadership. The flexibility and the adaptability. I move like a, I fly, it dance like a butterfly sting. Muhammad Ali. Yes. He would run back also. He would dodge. He would, he would dodge also. All right. That's a great example of someone who's agile to the power of N. So, I mean, he would bring in so many ways of techniques, skills, tactics in boxing. Incredible. So he would change with it. I mean, he would sometimes just stand and take take the punches because he knew how he could take the punches or change also. So change is equal to dissatisfaction, having a vision, taking action first thing and greater than I in a share. That's when change happens and leadership is about agile leadership. And when you don't need to change, when you're taking a decision to change and you think, no, change is not good right now. Let's take another decision not to change, that's also change. So we are trying to, we are just trying to discuss, we're trying to figure out we just try to discuss. We are trying to figure out that uh, that where where we are, how should we get there, and why we should get there. That's the thing.